Hey, this is Justin Singleton of The Justin Singleton Show, uh, and this is day 14 of our Building an Effective Devotional Life. Um, it is very late. It is 9.20 p.m. I don't typically do my devotions at this time, but I was in meetings, teaching in the morning, and then meetings up till, uh, up till like dinner time, and then I had to write some lectures, so I am late in doing my devotions. Please forgive me. Um, so we're going to walk and talk as I walk down on campus and hopefully go get a cup of coffee for the ride home so I don't fall asleep. Um, we're talking about time of day to do our devotions. Uh, and that is going to be our discussion for this short time period. Since I'm walking, I'll probably only get through talking about one thing. Uh, but let's talk about morning devotions. Uh, as you know, I am typically a morning devotion guy. I like to do my devotions in the morning. That said, I have not done my devotions in the morning pretty much at all. Ooh, bright light, sorry. Pretty much at all um, since we've been doing this whole um, you know, 30-day challenge. Um, just because I'm extremely busy, I'm finding myself no time in the morning. I've, get, I've got to get up and go. Uh, but some people like to do their devotions in the morning. If that's who you are, there are some things you need... I need to lock my door, sorry. There are some things that you need to do. Primarily, you need to make sure you are fully awake before you do your devotions. Um, <clears throat> how do you do that? Remember the whole fly lady thing I was talking about before? Uh, you need to make sure you, you know, are up and ready to meet the world, basically. You've got a shower... You're completely dressed with your shoes on. You're not walking around in your pajamas. You make it kind of dark in the stairwell. Um, the idea behind that is that if you are ready to meet the world, then you're ready to meet your God in devotions. If you're not ready to walk out the door and meet the world, there's a, a sense in that. Uh, there's a sense in which you, uh, well, you feel lazy. You feel tired. You feel like you are unaccomplished. You feel like there's, you're just not ready to do things. And if you're not ready to meet the world, you're probably not going to be fully awake and fully ready to do your devotions. So what you need to do is you need to make some sort of plan. Plan out your devotions. Plan out your schedule. Um, wow, it's really dark now. And I can't read my notes. Your schedule needs to be something probably not time-oriented, like... Uh, at 5.17 I'm waking up, and at 5.16 I'm brushing my teeth. But something uh, sequential, something like I'm going to wake up, I'm going to exercise, I'm going to shower, I'm going to turn on some music, then I'm going to have my devotions, then I'm going to eat breakfast, and then I'm going to leave. <coughs> Maybe something like that. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, but the whole point is that you need to actually have some sort of schedule decided upon or you will never, you'll never actually do it. That being said, you also uh, might want to do it in midday. One second. Hi. I want to get coffee. And I'm recording at the same time, so you hear me talk, I'm not talking to myself. <laughs> I think I've got a dollar left on this. That being said, you may want to do your devotions in the midday, in the middle of the afternoon. If that's the case, you need to also make sure you are fully ready to do that, um, which means you have to find as little disturbances as possible. It means you may need to take the phone off the hook. It means you might need to put up a do not disturb sign on your door or wherever you're at. It means that you may have to have your lunch already prepared. Uh, or even finish before you do your devotions. Look, it's a coffee machine. The point is you need to be completely private and set aside and have that time set aside for your devotions. If you are planning on doing evening devotions, you need to think about things like, are you tired at the end of the day? Are you, are you too stressed out? Too many conflicts? Um, family logistics? Uh, dinner, kids, last-minute chores, errands you might need to run, other possible unplanned after-work activities that might get in your way. 
try to think about these things and plan it out. The whole point, you needed a win, therefore you need to have an actual plan set out, set apart, so that you can get your devotions done. Try to identify and remedy any potential barriers that are going to stand in your way. And if you can do this, then you can actually set that plan and be able to conquer that second key, knowing when to do your devotions. And now comes the hard part. Siri not available. I don't want Siri. Connect to, to the board. internet. I'm uh, walking to my car, holding my coffee, and trying to read my notes at the same time. Our devotional for today comes from Romans chapter 1, verses 18 through 23. Man, how am I going to do this? All right. The wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all the godlessness and wickedness of men who suppress the truth by their wickedness since what god excuse me since what may be known about god is plain to them because god has made it plain for them to them for since the creation of the world god's invisible qualities his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen been understood from what has been made so that men are without excuse for although they knew god they neither glorified him as god nor gave thanks to him but their thinking became futile and their foolish hearts were darkened. Although they claimed to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the mortal God for images made to look like mortal men and birds and animals and reptiles. The idea here is simply that what happens in the world is... Yay. What we find happening in the world is people will suppress the truth that they see. The world is full of the fingerprints of God. We can see God in so many things. But sometimes people see that and they don't want God to be there. There are times when people say, you know, I don't really want to listen to God. I don't want God to exist. Because if he did, that would mean that I have to stop all the bad habits that I have. I know somebody personally who really doesn't like the idea of God. He doesn't want to hear anything about God. Because every time he hears about God, it reminds him of his own wicked state. It's not hard to believe in God. It's a whole lot easier, though, <laughs> to kind of hide things and to take the truth and set it aside. To just pretend it's not there for a little bit. To just kind of suppress it down and say, you know what? I'm not going to think about this. I'd rather not think about what hurts me. And since people often know themselves to be sinners, they do exactly what's written here. They suppress the truth in their unrighteousness, in their wickedness. By their wickedness, is how the New, New, New International Version says it. But that isn't how it should be. That isn't how it has to be. And that's kind of the issue here. If you find yourself suppressing the truth, if you find yourself kind of sticking your fingers in your ears like a three-year-old and saying, I'm not going to listen to this right now, God, don't talk to me. I'm going to do whatever, do my thing. You probably need to kind of stop and reevaluate some things and think it through. Because we don't want to live that life. We want to live a life completely dedicated to God in all ways, in every aspect. No hidden windows, rooms, no hidden closets. Let God see everything. Let's pray. Thank you, glorious Heavenly Father, for your love, your might. Thank you for the fact that you are visible in the world and that you are there for us and that you make yourself known to us. 
Lord, I ask that you would help guide us, teach us not to suppress the truth that we see in unrighteousness, and teach us, Lord God, just teach us to be more like you. By your grace, let us live according to your standards. Give us the grace to do just that. In Christ's name, amen. All right, catch us on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash The Justin Singleton Show. Thanks so much.